Hi, my name is Mona Maliki Merhaban and I am Katona Yoshida. So as someone who learns Nihonbyo, I think a lot of people have this image towards our community that we're really conservative and that we have really high expectations or standards. Which I think ultimately leads to the lack of interest and really probably is the reason why our culture is starting to fade away. Once I had this opportunity to talk to a professional Nihonbyo dancer and when I asked her what most people feel towards our industry, she also replied saying conservativeness, unfortunately. Throughout the video, I really wanted to show the world that our community is really not as difficult as a lot of people think it to be. There are five major styles in Nihonbyu, or so-called Kodai Ryuha. Nishikaryu, or the Nishikawa style being one of them. It is said to be the oldest out of them all. Originating back to 300 years ago, Nishikawa Senzo I established his style as a choreographer after training in the no and kabuki industry as an instrument player. A synonym for Nihonbyo may be storytelling, as when it comes to Nihonbyo, expressing emotions is a key factor. This is because you are essentially telling a story alongside the song you are dancing to. A lot of these songs have to do with romance, Mona says from her experience. Like Harusame, that sings about a woman and her lover who goes off with other women, and Kurokami, which sings about a woman who experiences a deep heartbreak and jealousy after being dumped by her lover. Eyes play a big role in Nihonbyo, because generally you are not allowed to open your mouth while dancing. Therefore, when expressing your emotions, you have to rely on your eyes. It is also where the audience's eyes naturally lay on, so it is vital that you make the most out of it. That being said, you have to be careful about blinking your eyes. Blinking your eyes too much is distracting for the audience, which is why you have to keep it to a minimum. Sensu is a prop used when dancing, and it is not only seen in Nihonbyo, but also in other fields too, such as Kabuki and No. Sensu plays a big role in Nihonbyo, as you can imitate a lot of things by changing the way you hold it and move it. For instance, in this scene, Mona is using her sensu to imitate an obon or a tea tray. She is holding it up high as a form of respect, so her breath does not touch the tea she brings for her guests. Mona's teacher often tells her, there is no goal in geigoto or arts. It will always keep on finding mistakes and places to improve on. She doesn't know where life will take her, but for now, she can't stop dancing. <laughs>